SDVoE technology isn't just the matrix transformed. It includes functionality which would normally be a very expensive optional extra. This course will walk you through the various video modes that SDVoE provides as standard, allowing you to provide a much more comprehensive offering to your customers. For years, we have relied on the matrix switch to meet the demands of the installation delivering uncompressed video to multiple displays. And until now, this has been impossible to replicate using video over IP. SDVoE is transforming video distribution. Put simply, SDVoE is the matrix transformed. Very soon, we will be in a world where 10 gig Ethernet is ubiquitous and 1 gig is old junk. However, we don't need to live in that world to take advantage of SDVoE. Rather than think of 10G as an Ethernet system, which needs to be in place already, think of it as the hardware which does the same job as the matrix switch. When you needed new matrix hardware, you expanded your infrastructure. And with SDVoE, it's exactly the same. Not only can SDVoE match the same latency performance and quality of the matrix switch, there are a number of built-in advanced processing features which the matrix switch could never offer, and this course will introduce you to them. Before we dive into the various video modes that SDVoE technology can offer, we should mention frame buffering. Think of the frame buffer as a computer memory which can store at least one full frame of video image data. A frame buffer can be loaded up at one speed, we call that the video clock rate, and then unloaded at another speed. And frame buffering has a few advantages. It enables frame rate conversion, giving you fully flexible scaling. This means that any resolution which goes into the transmitter will be scaled to whatever resolution the display is capable of. And since the display therefore never needs to adjust to a new signal timing, fast switching is amazing. There is a very small trade-off. Frame buffering adds around one to two frames of latency, depending on the difference between the input and the output clocks. But this will still only equate to around 10 milliseconds, which is way less than the human eye can detect. In SDVoE, the video mode is primarily a function for the receiver. The transmitter sends the data and the receiver can be configured for gen locking, fast switching, video wall and multi-view. And because each receiver works independently, two receivers receiving the same content from the same transmitter can be in two different video modes. You don't get that with a matrix switch. Let's begin with the GenLock mode. Mission critical applications, such as operating theatres or the live streaming of an event, require GenLocking. The GenLock mode ensures that the source connected to the transmitter outputs the exact resolution to the receiver connected to the display. The total latency from source to display in GenLock mode is 0.1 milliseconds, which is actually the same as your matrix switch. This is exactly what we mean by the matrix transformed. It's identical to matrix switch performance, but on a flexible, cost-effective Ethernet backbone. Additionally, the GenLock scaling mode combines the benefit of GenLocking with the advantage of scaling a stream to perfectly match the resolution of the display. While GenLock scaling adds a small amount of latency, it's still only around a quarter of a frame. It's important to note that since the display is synchronized to the source, it will disconnect when switching to another source, just like switching your TV from one source to another. You will generally experience a brief blank image while the display synchronizes with the new source. Fast switching is very important for applications where source switching happens regularly. No one wants to see a blank screen while the display works out how to display the image. SDVoE has a fast switching feature, which, when applied, 
ensures each display instantly switches sources. To achieve this, SDVoE matches any given video format to the receiver connected to the display, which in turn outputs the image to the preferred resolution of that display. To achieve this, frame buffering is used, but only one to two frames of latency will be added to enable switching to be instant, making this an ideal solution for residential and presentation applications. Video walls are commonplace in ProAV, and again, with a matrix switch topology, you would need separate video wall processors to achieve it. Some high-end matrix switch platforms do include a rudimentary video wall feature, but because of the matrix architecture, there's an uncontrolled timing difference between the screens. This creates distracting visual effects for any content where an object moves between screens. SDVoE technology allows the creation of video walls with perfect synchronization. When the video wall mode is used, frame buffers are implemented. The frame buffer is gen locked to the source, resulting in all the receivers being synchronized to each other. And the key benefit to this process is the ability to synchronize multiple displays. Without a gen locked video wall, the image would suffer from a bad stuttering effect and tearing between the screens. This is when an object moving between two screens simultaneously is not aligned with itself due to one of the screens being ahead of the other. In addition to the display wall matrix, another important parameter for a video wall is bezel correction. When an image is rendered across multiple displays, the display's bezel gap creates an unintentional space, resulting in a disjointed image. Look at the dome of the building at the back of this image, and you will see the curve of the building is not correctly aligned. Now watch what happens as we apply bezel correction. The image is being hidden behind the display bezels to make them appear like a picture frame. Now we can see the dome of the building is perfectly aligned behind the bezel. Finally, you may have heard of the term picture in picture. We call this multi-view. Put simply, it's the ability to be able to show multiple independent video feeds on a single display. The image processing required for multi-view means that to achieve this with a matrix switch topology, you would need additional and expensive controllers placed in line. In the multi-view application, the receiver subscribes to the multicast addresses of the desired sources, and these sources usually have different resolutions and frame rates. The MultiView application has the ability to adjust and scale the various source signals, placing them into a predefined layout of a precise dimension. The scene is then sent out to the connected display, and the key to successfully implementing a MultiView layout is to correctly manage the network bandwidth both at the receiver where the multiple streams are received and the transmitter where both the native and scaled down streams must coexist. Let's head over to the Infocom booth where Justin Kennington will demonstrate each of these video modes, comparing the output to that of the matrix switch. Hi everybody, I'm Justin Kennington, president of the SDVOE Alliance. Uh, I wanted to bring to you one of the demonstrations we put on for Infocom 2019 where we're comparing directly the performance of an SDVoE system to the performance of a matrix switch. So what I've got here behind me are two independent uh, AV distribution systems. On the left, SDVoE. On the right, a traditional matrix switch. Both of these systems are being fed by the same set of four sources. Both of these systems are driving four independent displays. And I'm using this Crestron touch panel as a way to control both systems in parallel. So anything I do to the system on the left happens to the system on the right simultaneously. Now the first thing we want to call attention to is the fact that the video quality on these systems is absolutely identical. SDVoE matches the performance of the matrix switch in image quality and latency. But when we start to actually use the system and investigate its capabilities, we see the differences and the advantages that SDVoE brings. For example, as I start to execute some matrix switches, you'll see that the 
SDVOE system switches instantly when I push the button without delay, without freezing. Uh, the image is just ready to go. The matrix switch, on the other hand, just takes a little bit longer. Now, we've picked an excellent matrix switch here. It does a very clean switch. It uses a nice freeze frame technique to make it happen so the screen doesn't go black. And yet you still, when comparing that to the instantaneous switching of SDVOE, you see that the matrix switch is really behind. We've introduced a new feature to the platform, which is an on-screen display that allows you to put arbitrary graphics on top of the image. In this case, we've created some graphics that describe which manufacturer's encoder and which manufacturer's decoder are being used to emphasize the fact that we've actually got nine different manufacturers interoperating together in this demonstration of the platform capabilities. Now, besides matrix switching, of course, SDVOE is capable of creating video walls by slicing up the image into components, blowing those up, and spreading one image across multiple displays. Our matrix switch in this example has the same capability. However, its switching, again, is not nearly as instantaneous and fast as the SDVOE systems. Furthermore, SDVOE has the capability to synchronize the displays in this video wall and prevent any distortions or tearing that happens when there's high motion content stretched across multiple displays. Finally, SDVOE has a capability that no matrix switch can match, and that's the ability to encode multiple streams of video onto a single display. So I can create picture-in-picture -picture scenarios, or 2x2, two 3x3 two, three three arrays of video, and allow you to monitor several channels of video on a single display. SDVOE is the matrix transformed. Thank you.